Hi there, I'm Fraser Armstrong. Welcome back to Music for Mere Mortals. Today we're going to learn how to solo, even if you've never heard the song before. Okay, here we go. Okay, the first thing that you need to know to, to do this method is you need to know all five pentatonic patterns and you need to know them well and how they connect. So if you haven't, if you're not at that stage right now, go back to the pentatonic videos that I've got out there and learn these patterns. Once you know those patterns, then you know the superstructure of the entire neck of the guitar, soloing wise. One thing you've probably noticed about all five pentatonic patterns is they are made up of just two things. Three fret spreads and four fret spreads. That's all they're made up of, just that. Basically, we're just gonna narrow down what pattern we're in by the way it sounds. So, so you're going to need to use your ears on this one. All right, so let me demonstrate. The first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find one note that sounds good. So I usually like to start with A. So, so listening to that song, listening to whatever song it is you're, you're listening to, does that note sound good? And if it doesn't, try the one on either side of it. A flat or A sharp. Okay? One of those, two, one of those three notes should sound okay. So then, let's say A does sound good. If A sounds good, we have two choices on that string for our pentatonics. If it's, if it's one, four, then which patterns can it be? So what you're going to do is you're going to test a 1-3 or a 1-4. And you're going to decide, okay, which one sounds better. If it's 1-4, we know that it can only be two of the patterns. We you know it can either be pattern 4 or pattern 1. And that's a good way to remember them. Patterns 1 and 4 have one fours at the top and on the bottom. Okay, so if that one sounds better, we know we're on th those two patterns. If a one three sounds better or a three fret spread sounds better, then we know it's going to be patterns two, three, or five because they have one threes at the bottom. So where do we go from here? If it's one three that sounds good, then we go to the next string. If, if the next string is a one four, like that, and that sounds good, then we're on pattern three. And to confirm, we play the rest of the pattern. And all of those notes should fit very nicely I mean, some of them will be a little bit more dissonant than others, but they'll all fit very nicely in the song. If the second string, if a one, if a three fret spread sounds better than a four foot spread, four fret spread, not a four foot, <laughs> then we know we're either in pattern five or pattern two. So if we go to the next string, we know that in pattern two, we have a one three at the, it's a, the top of the little house. That will sound better than the one four. So whichever, one of them's gonna sound a little bit better than the other one, but to confirm, always do the rest of the pattern. So if we think it's the one four in this case, that sounds better, then we're gonna go, we're gonna do the rest of pattern five and see whether those notes, and, and, and play slow because you need, to, you need to hear the notes, okay? You need to hear every single one of them because if one of them doesn't fit, you probably have the wrong pattern. If one of them really kind of goes, eh, I just, then you got the wrong pattern. So then maybe try pattern two. Maybe pattern two sounds better than pattern five. 
okay? And once you've determined the pattern that you're playing on there, then you know where all the other patterns are. And then it's just a matter of having fun and jamming, okay? So let's actually do this. We'll show a close-up of the guitar, and we'll just pick a song and play along with it, okay? Here we go. Okay, so I've just thrown up just a random backing track, so let's go through this uh, method of trying to play, all right? So, okay, so there's A. It sounds pretty good. Okay, G sharp or A flat sounds pretty good too, though. What about, what about this? Now that sounds pretty dissonant. So let's just stick with A. And then we've got a choice of whether we're going to do a 1, 4, or a 3 fret spread. So let's try the 3 fret spread. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Let's try the 4. And if it's a 1, 3 that sounds better, then we're probably in pattern 2, pattern 3, or pattern 5. So, to narrow things down, let's go to the next string. If it's pattern two or five, a one or a, a one three or a three fret spread will work better. Okay, so that sounds very good. But let's just make sure. Okay, that's, there's some dissonance there, so. So. All right, now, we're gonna go to the next string. If it's pattern two, We'll use the top of our house in this three fret spread. Okay, now that sounds pretty good. Now, but let's just make sure it's not pattern five. Yeah, that sounds pretty dissonant. So, so now let's confirm with the rest of pattern two. Now, just about every note there sounded great. So, now that you know pattern two is at A, then we know all, where all the rest of the patterns are. There's pattern one. Pattern three. Pattern four, and then pattern five will be here. Pattern one again. Okay. And then you're off to the races and that's all there is to it so there you go that's basically the method this will it, it usually blows people's minds when you when you just start playing with something that you've never done before but it's just like any magic trick if you know how to do it it's easy now here's a couple of things though so make sure your guitar is in tune one like that's it's critical to have that or you won't be able to use your ear to judge whether something is is in tune or is dissonant. Sometimes turntables don't pl don't play at the right speed. So even if your guitar is in tune, you may not be able to find a note that sounds good with anything. And it just means that your turntable is not pl is not playing at the proper speed. And sometimes even on YouTube, uh, they record songs uh, from record players and they are not in tune and therefore it's tough to play with them. Another thing that might throw you off is songs that change keys. Ear training is very important. So do some of that if you're, if you're struggling with this. So once, once you've gotten your sort of your benchmark where you're at and what pattern you're playing, then you know where all the other ones are and then you can employ all your different soloing strategies and if you uh, haven't seen some of those go to some of my other videos where I talk about the one three slideys and the fan blade. I have experienced many many times where the actual musicians on stage don't really know the key that you're in and you have to find it very quickly so this helps with that too this method okay so I hope this has been uh, valuable to you and we'll see you next time.